Emergency major Procedure for Incarcerated Rectal Prolapse. We describe the treatment of an incarcerated full thickness rectal prolapse with a rectal sigmoidectomy through a perineal approach. The full extension of the prolapse or ischemic rectum is evaluated to identify and delimit the cutting incision level and the end-to-end -end anastomosis area. A circular incision is made 2 cm proximal to the dentate line in the viable rectal mucosa. The cut begins in the anterior face of the prolapse with electrocautery equipment. The incision is deepened through the full thickness of the rectal wall. A special care must be taken with hemostasis at the incision line since the rectal mucosa bleeding during this step can generate significant blood losses for the patient. Adequate hemostasis of the mesorectum is achieved by progressive ligation as the incision is deepened through the full thickness of the rectal wall. After circumferentially opening the intestinal wall, the entire portion of the intestine that can be exteriorized is progressively pulled outwards while the mesenteric vessels are carefully ligated with non-absorbable 2O silk sutures. Adequate hemostasis of the mesosigmoid is achieved by progressive ligation as it is exteriorized. A posterior approximation of the levator muscles or levator plasty can be performed with interrupted absorbable 2O monofilament sutures to narrow the dilated levator hiatus. The prolapsed incarcerated rectum is resected up to the viable portion. The distal edematized rectum is transected before initiating the circumferential anastomosis to prevent abulsion or perforation of the proximal colon. The adequate vascularization in the cut area should be verified and the proximal borders of the sigmoid refer with cardinal stay sutures to the anal canal on the side of the dented line to prevent retraction upon completion of the resection. This will help to maintain the orientation of structures at the time of intestinal anastomosis. A hands-on single-layer anastomosis is performed circumferentially with interrupted full thickness stitches with automatic absorbable suture. Estate sutures between the proximal end and the anal mucosa of the dented line help to maintain the adequate orientation of the anastomotic segments. Once the anastomosis is finished, the reference are removed and the anastomous intestine retracts towards the anal canal. Almayer's procedure is a complex but successful strategy in this situation given the presence of edema and ischemic changes in the face of an incarcerated or extrangulated rectal prolapse.